My name is Cameron Parker. I am a product manager on the Microsoft customer and partner experience team. I'm joined today by Sam Reddy Seth, who is on the records management team. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about automating security, compliance, identity, and management with new Microsoft Graph APIs. And so this is specifically around the records management APIs that we'll be talking about today. All right, so just a little bit of the agenda. Uh, so overview of the APIs and their use cases. Uh, we'll do a little bit of demos, uh, of course, and talk about licensing and monetization, uh, demo environments and trials, and then kind of end with uh, some, some links to some resources and, and things like that. So jumping right into it. Um, so again, included API. So I mentioned Skim earlier, right? So for Skim automation, we're really talking about three different sets of APIs, uh, records management being the one that we're talking about today, uh, but there is also eDiscovery Premium as well as privacy. And so uh, overview of the uh, records management APIs and their use cases. So essentially these, these APIs exist to kind of help organizations manage that uh, retention and deletion of data to meet their legal obligations and compliance regulations. And so kind of to quote, uh, data lifecycle management is what helps you keep the data you need and delete what you don't. A uh, couple uh, sample use cases for the APIs that we have available. Again, these are uh, currently in beta. Uh, and so right now, uh, what you're looking at in terms of use cases is uh, event space retention. Uh, so, you know, triggering based off of some sort of internal or external event, such as like an employee leaving the company, um, as well as label management when using a third party tool. So automation around like creation, updates of, of labels and, and that kind of thing. So moving on, we're looking at a few of the sample queries via the, the API, what these, what these would look like as far as like the raw HTTP request form. And so this particular one is for the events-based uh, retention example. And so looking at this use case, right, got a few sample queries. So uh, listing or enumerating those retention event types that you may have, uh, retention event type being associated with a label and then, you know, using a retention event uh, to, to a, a, again, you know, uh, trigger that uh, event, right? So that some action can be performed uh, based off of labels associated with that, uh, that event type. And so uh, looking to the documentation down here at the bottom, um, moving on to the other uh, use case, we have label management. And so again, more of like a CRUD operations against uh, labels, right? So, you know, creating, enumerating labels, performing updates via that patch operation, you can delete as well. Uh, again, a link to that uh, documentation. All right, and so enough talking about it. So let's take a look at it. Uh, and for this, we're going to be using Postman. And so uh, we recently, uh, along with some of the other API sets, we were able to incorporate these into our official Microsoft Graph collection for Postman. And so for those of you who may not be familiar with Postman, this is a great API testing tool that allows you to uh, you know, craft HTTP queries and test out the APIs without having to write a whole bunch of code uh, in order to do that. Um, we provide a, a, specifically for Microsoft Graph, we do provide a collection that allows you to essentially have these pre-crafted queries so that you're not having to manually craft each and every query that you want to test out against the Microsoft Graph API. And so basically you, you can obtain this. It, it's, it's in our documentation, uh, which we'll share a link to a little bit later, uh, but essentially you can fork this collection, uh, bring it into your local Postman instance, and then um, set it up based off of an application registration. So of course, you know, using Microsoft Graph, you're, you're looking at that, uh, that, that typical setup of, you know, creating an application registration in Azure, uh, and then getting your, your information such as your tenant ID, client ID, client secret, and so forth. Uh, and that's what you're going to use in order to get that access token. And so you may have noticed that we're using the authorization code flow in this example. And so uh, we, we are using delegated permissions here. Uh, and so we'll go ahead and get started by grabbing an access token that we'll need. All right, and you can see that completed successfully. And so now you may have noticed that, you know, kind of jumped straight into getting that token, even though we were using the authorization code flow. That's only because I've, I've already pri uh, previously consented to that permission. Otherwise, you know, you would, you would see that typical flow of having to sign in with an account uh, and then consent to that permission had you not done so already. All right, and so... Uh, with that, as you may have seen uh, just, uh, just a little bit ago, we have some variables and things like that that we'll be using for the demo. So uh, that's under the kind of root collection here and the variables that I have populated. You will find these APIs, the, the sample queries for these APIs under the compliance folder under delegated. 
because uh, again, we are using delegated permissions here. Uh, and so compliance folder, records management, and then we have, you can see we have the two kind of use cases we talked a little bit about earlier. And so uh, moving into, we'll, we'll go through this uh, label management scenario. And so uh, starting out, so we've already got our token. Uh, you can kind of see here how like we've got, the, you know, just the basic layout of Postman. And so you've got your get call, and then you've got the actual HTTP query here that, that you would be executing to, to make that call. And so we'll go ahead and hit send there since we got our token. All right, and so you can see here we got a successful, uh, you know, returns uh, information about existing labels. I haven't created one yet, so this is, you know, a, a label that I had previously created, but we'll go ahead and, and we'll get one created. So you can see a little bit different here. We're using a post call. Uh, we do have the body of this request populated with some information that we need to send in order to create that event. Uh, you may have noticed the uh, this kind of weird looking text here with the um, uh, curly braces around it, and this is just one of those variables, right? So you can actually feed the variables into the request bodies, which is which is a really cool feature of Postman. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hit send there, and if everything goes well, uh, yep, so we get our 201 created response and we can see that we've successfully created a label. And so what I'll do is I'll actually kind of jump over and show you. Um, so if I go to, uh, you can actually view this under data lifecycle management as well. If we jump to records management, we should be able to take a look at this. And so under our file plan and it might have already refreshed and yep, so we can see here, uh, I believe it's this top one right here. They they look similar just from the uh, the way that it's kind of uh, viewed right now. Let's see. And so uh, another note about this, you can see that there's a under this test field. What we're actually doing here, uh, as you'll see here in just a moment, is we're actually capturing the ID that's being returned in the uh, body of the response and saving that into a variable so that we can use that in a future, which I'll show you uh, here shortly. And so. Uh, as you can see, what we did is we fed in that label into this, this next request, and this is just a get request to basically get that label that we just created. And so again, you can do things like, you know, enumerating the labels, creating, uh, I'm getting details about just this one specific label that we just created. Uh, you can even go as so far as to do an update. So we're doing a, a, a patch uh, for that. Uh, again, using that ID that we just created, you can see a 204 no content. Right, and we effectively updated the uh, description for admins there, and you can see that that actually updated. And then, kind of jumping back to the portal real quick, if I selected the uh, correct one, oh, it looks like it was the second one actually. Um, you'll see that um, uh, if we do a refresh, and then if I select that label, you'll actually see that it was updated in the UI. Right, so that's kind of a key takeaway. The reason for showing this is just that you can see that essentially we're performing actions or what you would be doing through the UI, and those actions are reflected uh, when made through the API in the UI as well. All right, and so again, you could do delete, uh, delete if you wanted to with that for that label. We're not going to do that here today, um, but then uh, again, we also have this other use case, uh, so definitely recommend that you, you check this out uh, if you're interested. So with that, we will go ahead and jump back to our slides. Uh, quick word about licensing and monetization. So some require uh, some operations require an E3 license, some require an E5. The kind of key takeaway there is the current APIs they they match the feature licensing, right? So the the feature associated with you know that that graph API operation that you're performing. Please do note that the future records management APIs uh, they may be metered based on consumption. So just wanted to make sure to call that out. Uh, you can learn more about licensing at aka.ms uh, forward slash dlm forward slash licensing. Okay, quick word about permissions. Uh, so as these APIs require delegated permissions, uh, I did want to make sure to call out that the uh, we have this concept of effective permissions with Microsoft Graph, right? And especially in the context of delegated permit permissions, it's that intersection of not only the Microsoft Graph permission that you've you've consented to, uh, but also that backend permission, right, associated with the, the essentially the the service, right, that that you're calling, right. So the essentially the the records management permissions in this case. So do want to be uh, cognizant of that. And so uh, if you'd like to learn more about the permissions required on the backend, you can check out this link here. All right. 
And so for demo environments and trials, uh, so we do have the uh, a sandbox tenant available via the M365 developer program. Uh, again, it comes with uh, 25 E5 licenses. It is 90 days. However, it does self-renew as long as you uh, keep using that, that tenant uh, for developer purposes. So you can check that out at aka.ms forward slash M365 uh, dev program. Uh, not really meant for like load testing or anything of that nature. If you do want to do load testing, uh, recommend kind of checking out an actual tenant with you know additional licenses and so forth uh but this is a very useful tool for that uh or i should say for you know for just like kind of basic sandbox testing and that kind of thing so for the postman collections you have aka.ms forward slash graph postman that was the postman collection that we were uh, going through earlier so again if you are interested in taking a look at that please do check out that link all right now on the roadmap we do have application permissions uh, as well as file plan descriptors. So I just wanted to call that out. All right, and then so for some additional resources about this, uh, definitely recommend checking out aka.ms uh, forward slash DLM forward slash API. Uh, learning more about events-based retention that we talked a little bit about earlier. Uh, we have a link here for that and uh, certainly encourage you to leave feedback. Uh, that can be done via aka.ms forward slash DLM forward slash feedback. And with that, uh, Fabian, I will turn it back over to you. Uh, Ken, do you have time for some questions um, or do you want to do them in the chat? Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't have a chance to take a look at the chat. So uh, we can go ahead and it's however you'd like to. If we have time, uh, we could certainly yeah. take. Um, yeah, we have or, a, otherwise, we can, yeah, we have, we have like five minutes just so that we can go. Um, there's a question from Aravind asking, is there an API or UI for end users to see which documents are about to expire through retention label? That's, that's that kicks us off. Yeah, sorry, Sam, would you like to? Yeah, I was just, uh, yeah, okay, first thing, uh, hi everyone, and uh, great to see this platform. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share this, these great APIs with everyone, so glad to be here. All right, and then coming to the question, and yeah, thanks Cameron for this amazing presentation, loved it early, of course. Yeah, and coming to the question right now, I don't think we have this, but of course it's a great question. I think it's a great finding for us to, uh, to see if we can accommodate in the roadmap. Uh, we do need feedback. That's what we are here for. We want to see what uh, your user experience is, what you think is the missing piece, and uh, we want to deliver the best right there. So, yeah, we don't have this right uh, at the moment. All right. Is anyone? Uh, thank you, Amrita, for that um, response to the question. Um, I think that's the only. I think there were a few comments, but that was the only one question that I see called out. Did anyone else have? Let me see. New comment on here. Yeah, and so one thing I did want to call out as well. Just kind of uh, let me jump back to the to the slides real quick. So going back to the uh, permissions here, because uh, in the demo, I believe I used the the uh, the default for the the demo. So I did want to call out the specific Microsoft Graph permission that you would be using, kind of uh, in addition to those backend permissions I was referring to. And so that would be the uh, records management dot reader dot rewrite uh, dot all permission. So again, just wanted to to mention that. But uh, yeah, so with that, uh, Fabian, thank you. Turn it back over to you. All right, thanks very much, Ken. Thank you also, Samrita. Thank you.